In 1967, while traveling in France, I was invited with my wife to the Chateau de Toiry near Paris, the home of my friend the Count Antoine de La Penouse. It was here that I discovered two manuscripts, which I immediately recognized as unknown versions of two Chopin waltzes, the G-flat major and the famous E-flat major. They were found lying in an 18th century trunk between letters and old clothing belonging to an ancestor, Delphine de la Penouse, to whom Chopin gave them as a gift in 1833. By an extraordinary coincidence, five years later at Yale University in the United States, I accidentally unearthed two further versions of the very same waltzes, again in Chopin's hand. Grand Waltz Brillant, probably the most famous of Chopin's waltzes. One, of, one waltz that he wrote really for dancing. Uh, the Yale version that I found of this waltz is an earlier version than the Tuari version <clears throat> and has some startling differences from the published version. For instance, the very beginning of this waltz, which starts with this fanfare. one trumpet announcing the dance. In the earlier version, Chopin had another idea. Later on, this... That's the published version. The Yale version, he has a stop. He doesn't, he doesn't continue it. Then he goes on to do something which is rather modern almost jazzy, I think, in this passage. This is the published version. Now, the Yale version. Syncopated. Kind of an amusing thing, I think. Then, he goes on the middle of this waltz, in the published version, goes something like this. And so on and so on. Then in the, in the Yale version, he does something different. He does this. That wonderful left hand. Instead of... Changes the character and he writes dolente, sadly, with sorrow, with pain. Then, listen to this, this difference. That is not in the published version. The published version is. Change the rhythm.
Chopin intensely disliked giving large public performances, and during his lifetime he played a surprisingly small number of about 30 concerts. In a letter to Liszt he explained, The audiences embarrass me. I feel suffocated by their breathing, paralyzed by their inquiring eyes, and dumb in front of their strange faces. But you are made for public playing, and if you can't win them over, at least you can stun them with acrobatics. For Chopin, whose physique was particularly frail and who was a victim of stage fright, a concert was an endurance test to be avoided whenever possible. <laughs>